Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and in this episode, we're going to talk about pin washes, shaders, filters, and lining in. And most importantly, we're going to talk about how to use them and when to use them. Pin washes, shading, and lining in are all ways to establish contrast on a model. Though they all achieve more or less the same things, they each have different strengths and weaknesses and are carried out differently. But before we get into the specifics, we need to understand the purpose of these products. If you take a miniature and paint it as you see the real world equivalent, it'll look just plain wrong. That's because light reflects differently off of large things than it does off of small things. And of course, models are smaller than their real-world counterparts, so we have to compensate. Here is a Sherman Firefly at Base Borden in Ontario, Canada. It looks like a green tank, right? Now here is a Sherman Firefly in 1-100 scale. It's been painted to a moderate standard for wargaming. Imagine now just what it would look like if it was painted exactly the same green in the same way. It would look bad. A model isn't reality. It's a representation of it. We need to accentuate the size and mass of a model in order to fool the viewer's eyes into believing that it exists in the real world. So we do this with a number of techniques, such as highlighting, but most importantly, we use shading. We do this in order to accentuate the shadows, and we exaggerate them intentionally. Incidentally, the smaller the model gets, the more you need to exaggerate the shading here we have a T-70 next to an IS-2. The T-70 has been given a quick highlight by a dry brush, but it's not been shaded by lining in or any other form. The IS-2, however, has been pinned washed with Tamiya's panel liner. Notice that the IS-2 has greater definition, establishing its mass and size. While without this effect, the definition on the T70 appears small and without any mass. Moreover, the T70 is just not as visually interesting. Okay, so I hear you say that this isn't the best example. A T70 is obviously smaller and less massive than an IS2. But give me a break. I had to search for half an hour to find a model that wasn't lined in or pin washed. This is because it's so essential. I've been using these shading techniques since I was in my late teens, and I don't have any unlined models. I had to pull this out of my son's collection, and even then, it was from many years ago when he was just learning. Oh. So, now we've established what these shading techniques are and why they're important. So, we should go ahead and look at each separately. But first, I owe you a little bit of a caveat. You see, most experienced model painters will use these techniques interchangeably. In fact, they'll literally blur the edges in how they're used. That was a joke. They'll combine each of the techniques with each other in order to get an optimal result. And in order to know when to do this, well, you need experience, and practice. So, let's take a closer look. Pin washes are probably the most accurate way of getting the shadows in the specific cracks and crevices of the model. But, it's also something that a lot of model painters find intimidating. Getting the black paint or ink in around the small details at first seems like it may require super, superhuman skills with a very fine brush. But what most people forget is the wonder of capillary action. When your paint or ink is of a low surface tension, 
then it will naturally flow around the model's features, providing the perfect effect. The key, of course, is using the right tool for the job. And this is where enamels come in. First, though, you need to help the situation by giving the model a couple of coats of a gloss or satin varnish. Enamel can damage layers of acrylics, so you need to protect these. Plus, a smooth varnished surface will help the enamels flow just where you want them. And then all you need to do is go in and apply the varnish in the general area of where the details are and watch the miracle of capillary action do the rest. My favorite product for this is Tamiya panel liners. They flow well and the bottle comes with its own brush. However, there are many products available and all of them are good. One thing to keep in mind is that you should have some enamel thinners on hand to change the viscosity if needed or to clean up any mistakes. All you need to do is moisten a brush with a thinner and brush it back and forth, erasing any mistakes of unwanted pools of enamel before it dries. There is an additional trick you can do here as well. If you have a particularly stubborn area to shade, such as between the ridges on the front of this BMP, all you need to do is run your brush moistened with thinner over the area before applying the enamel. The thinner you apply it first will help distribute the paint to only the lowest points. Now, if you want to avoid all the smell or complications of enamels, you can use capillary action with pin washes with acrylic inks too, though it's not really as effective. To do this, you need to invest in a bottle of airbrush flow improver and mix it about 25% to 75% ink with black acrylic ink. You can more or less apply it as you would with enamels, but with no need for thinners. Just be warned, this will simply not flow as well as if you're using enamel, and you'll need some fine brushwork skills to get the most of it. For this reason, I rarely use it on my 1100 scale models, but I use it all the time on my 28 millimeter models. If pin washes are about accuracy, shaders and washes are about speed. A shader is an acrylic product like Army Painter Strong Tone, which you can apply over the whole model, and it sinks into the depths, providing a gradient to the color. The effect can be quite subtle. On this horse, you can see how the shader settles into the musculature, making it more defined. Washes are exactly the same, but tend to be thinned down inks and are less responsive for settling into the depths. As a result, I don't use washes in a, in a traditional sense very often, and for this reason I recommend you check out the Army Painter line of shaders. These function like a wash, but much smarter. They don't pool on the surface, and provide an even gradient of shades, bringing out the definition. It's possible to use an enamel as a wash over the whole model as well. I find that enamels are better as a pin wash, but if you want to start by moistening the whole model with a brush dampened with thinner, you can then just go ahead and brush the wash over top of it. While it's all still wet, use a fresh brush moistened with clean thinner to brush away the pools of wash, pushing them into the recesses and building the shadows. This is fast, and not really that hard to do, but it is less effective in developing contrast than, say, using a shader, varnishing over it, and using a pin wash after that. This brings us to lining in. This is done with acrylic paint or ink, and it has the simplest ingredients, but it is the most difficult to apply as a form of precision shading. To do this, you take your paint, or my favorite is to mix 75% black paint with 25% black acrylic ink, add water to it to get the viscosity that suits you, and then you just go in and begin painting it into the nooks and crannies of your model by hand using a fine brush. 
And yes, this is time consuming. Most importantly, because of the amount of detail work you need to do, it takes discipline. When you're lining in this way, you just need to bite the bullet, work at it, and eventually it'll get done. However, when it comes to the result, lining in allows for more control than any of the other options. Because it's so labor intensive and time consuming though, I do tend to reserve this technique for key features on important models or for displays like this Eastern Front battle scene. If you enjoy my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is supported entirely by its viewers. My supporters get recognition in my videos and are able to continue the conversation about the art of building a miniature in our community. Would you like to collaborate with me on an upcoming project? Maybe receive painting lessons or even get a custom piece of terrain? Then check out my supporter levels. They start from just $4 a month. Plus, all of my subscribers get access to my STL 3D printer files. The variety is growing all the time, but right now you can get my 20mm basing system with the ever so cool miniature landscape hobbies themed movement trays. And who wouldn't want that? That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and please remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Happy holidays! And as always, remember to keep building life in miniature.